Well, good afternoon. I'm Amy Holland. Uh, today I'm talking about People Hacking 101. So a little bit about my background. Um, I'm actually not quite the typical uh, IT speaker that has been up here today. My background is actually in visual design and communications marketing. So um, I've had a lot of experience with uh, user interface design for web websites as well as social media. Um, I spent four years at the Florida Department of Transportation managing upwards of 60 social media accounts across the state. Uh, the department's decentralized, so every district office had not only its own uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, WordPress, uh, but sometimes a couple other sites on top of that depending on some local initiatives and safety initiatives. So between uh, multiple authors and a um, couple, couple dozen accounts, uh, being able to make sure that the information getting disseminated was secure, especially for state safety and things like that was very important. So that's kind of, I kind of got interested in um, a lot of information that we released as well as how that can be manipulated by people looking to take advantage of the information we're giving out. So today we're talking about how um, Social engineers attack what can be the most vulnerable link in that chain of security with this, uh, how firewalls and external defenses are getting stronger every day. People are becoming more trusting. They're putting a lot more information out than they used to. Uh, we don't get those emails anymore that says, you know, ding, you have, you have mail. We're getting them constantly. So people tend to gloss over them, not check them as clearly. So. Uh, social engineers are taking advantage of, uh, they're exploiting the fact that we're more last in how we are approaching the information we're receiving and what we're sending out. So how a social engineer is like a magician is they're both illusionists. What they do is they exploit people's willingness to believe, um, to, to believe something that they see. So what they're doing is they're often um, pretending to be a source or a trusted individual or company to be able to have you give them that information and, and um, also they, they also like to exploit um, our curiosity. So if you've ever seen like a flash drive on the ground, sometimes we'll have malware on that. People are just curious. Sometimes we want to see what other people's data is or sometimes we're good Samaritans and we want to turn it into somebody. You stick in a laptop, next thing you know your laptop's fried or it's got ransomware on it. Uh, ransomware is actually uh, connected to 97% of phishing attacks. So this not only affects individuals but large companies who have a lot to lose from having this data held hostage. Uh, so heavily, like employees are a lot of the people who are attacked, people with company emails, and this is why we're trying to integrate more programs to um, have this awareness among employees and company individuals as well as just uh, private individuals on how to identify these illusions of what they may assume to be legitimate sources and be able to uh, know when or when not to click something. And uh, social media, again, is becoming more and more prevalent as a, an attack vector. People are, cre uh, they're more likely to trust somebody in social media because it has a face, it has a name, it feels more connected. Um, people feel like they can talk to celebrities, whereas years ago they couldn't do that. So people are exploiting that need and that want to feel connected to uh, larger individuals, individuals who have a lot of um, social trust in them and it's an easy way, like for example, these three accounts here, they all use the exact same profile picture, they all use the exact same title name, uh, the photos and videos are exactly the same, so upon first glance, it looks like you're following the individual that um, you're seeing screenshotted in the news and things like that, but if you look closely, the handle has a single letter variant in each example, and that's very common with URLs and emails as well. All right, so Mad Hat Media created a great walkthrough of the life cycle, cycle of a spear phishing attack, and that's a targeted phishing attack. Uh, and spear phishing attackers gain as much information about the target as they can in order, oh, I apologize there. 
Um, they they gain as much information about the target as they can in order to convince, uh, craft a more convincing attack. This is a lot like um, hot reading. If you've ever heard of illusionists who will do cold reading or hot reading uh, to kind of guess and predict and uh, either try to convince people that they're psychic or they can read minds or that they can pick the card that they, you know, is this your card, the kind of space. Um, Cold reading is a lot more like brute force. You know, you just keep guessing and guessing and guessing until you get it. Hot reading for like a magician is more like a spear fishing attack. It's very targeted. They look up the information. They want to know more about you. They want to know more about your friends so that when they go and they talk to your friends or your coworkers, those people believe it's you because they can provide information that you've willingly given out online. And uh, this is often exploited to access um, individuals' trust, uh, banking credentials, to deliver ransomware. So it's, it definitely has an impact. All right, uh, the Social Engineer Toolkit, or SET, is a classic framework written in Python for Linux and Mac that allows for quick and dirty attacks. It's built and maintained by Trusted Sec and it allows for easy backdoor payload integration with systems such as Metasploit. SET is a command line based utility like many of the tools and distributions such as Kali. It goes beyond just phishing and um, SET can read credentials from uh, scraping sites like uh, I'm about to do here in just a second. I'll show you a quick example. All right, firing up set. And in uh, most popular Kali images, including the top or the Kali top 10 image, that's included under social engineering tools. And it's a, it's a CLI tool. So we're going to jump in with one, which is social engineering attack. And that gives a menu of possible attack vectors. And then we're going to go for the credential harvester. And I apologize, I pre-recorded this, so it's uh, jumping a little ahead of me here. All right, so what we've done here is um, we're doing a custom import that's allowing us to bring in a properly built template for automatic page scraping. We're using the default IP of the virtual machine here for this test. So after I hit enter, we enter the URL scrape and we're going to do Facebook since it's so popular. And you can see that it says login.facebook.com. And uh, after a moment, we'll scrape that site. Sorry, trying to get this to play again. There we go. All right. And now we have what's um, an email template that I just kind of hastily put together. If I spent a little more time on it, I can make it look more convincing. But um, this is it's coming from fishjam at protonmail.com, so obviously not a Facebook account. So it's asking the user to reset their Facebook password, and here's the link that we're asking them to click. All right, so we sent that out from Gmail. All right, and it went to our user here. Oh, I apologize, but Sam's the uh, the recipient. So, um, so they, you know, the user sees something. Again, if I had spent a little bit more time, it might look a little more convincing. But sometimes that's not always needed. Sometimes you just need a logo and a headline that says, you know, reset your password. So I'm going to click this here. And we go to a page that looks very convincing, and this is not the actual Facebook page, this is a scrape. Uh, it took all the information and made an identical clone of it. And um, people will think, you know, oh, you know, there's a system error, I got logged out, my cache got cleared, and it's just asking me to log in again. But again, this, this is just kind of a false um, setup here where they're, they're giving us their credentials. They're not giving it to Facebook. And what happens after they give us their username and login is it's going to redirect to the real Facebook. 
So they have no idea what they've done. They, they think that everything's good, they've logged in, they can see their information again, and, and this is what it looks like again after the scrape. So we got a hit and it's pulled all, pulled all the post messages from the site. And um, again, this will be online, so if you want to read through it a little bit more clearly. And this tool, again, if you want to experiment with it. This was set for using this one. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is go fish. Uh, this one, instead of just being a, a cl um, kind of an, imp uh, an imposter or impersonator, this one's going to be a spoof. So it's actually going to be a little bit more convincing here. And this is also a freeware project. They're both freeware. Uh, this one can be used on Mac, Linux, or, uh, or Windows from the GitHub or at getgofish.com. All right, so uh, GoFish can download to sending a campaign in 30 minutes or less. It's a very quick tool. Uh, this video is going to highlight a reel of doing this for testing. So we're grabbing the appropriate download from GitHub. And once we have that, we can run it. The fun thing is sometimes even our own computers are less trusting than we are of people. We're the admin. They're like, do you want to run anyway? And it's, you know, you have to convince them. But some people uh, are convinced just that they see a logo. So it really shows how it's an easily exploitable area. All right. So kind of opening this up here. Signing in. And the default credentials are admin and GoFish. So creating a new landing page here. And this is for our test campaign. And uh, right now I'm importing the besides Tallahassee.org website. So we're going to spoof that. And I'm also doing MySpace, since we already did Facebook, and that's another site uh, some people still use. It's classic. And after we log in here, we're going to make our email template after, again, we proved at the computer that we're real. Although what we're really doing is helping them with their algorithm of image identification. <laughs> okay, so we're copying that email from the password request set or um, reset request link. And putting it in our campaign. And this is the source code from the site. It's a more of a manual version of what we did on the last scrape. Okay, our viewing rendered HTML, and it looks like the password email that we had sent to ourselves. 
So um, by using that, we were able to duplicate it exactly and uh, what people who have maybe used that before know what to expect. And uh, while this is finishing up, the reason why this is such a great tool is because you can use it to kind of test um, and see in real time what employees are clicking on and using without them actually clicking anything malicious because it would have been sent by you. So this is more of a training tool than anything if used properly. Um, and it'll show you in real time how many people have clicked it, uh, who's necessarily clicked it, and it lets you know how large this issue is in your division or um, how you might need to address it. So again, this will be up on the, uh, the B-Sides website on YouTube, so you can follow along with it later if you kind of want to walk through on how this is done. All right, so we've created that template. All right, this is where we're entering our um, SMTP credentials, so it knows where the email is coming from. And this is our bulk group, so uh, when you send it out, you can send it out again to an entire uh, employee email list or um, wh whoever your test audience is. All right, this is the URL where we want to send them to this campaign. And the email came through. This is the spoofed email. We're pretending that we're in uh, an employee's account right now. It looks like a legitimate email. It's asking for their password again. Now, this actually says HTTPS MySpace.com, which is why, you know, Hovering over it and seeing where it goes might ne not necessarily be as easy. So it's going to our spoof site. And now once we've had an employee log in, we can go back to our dashboard and see. And if you look between those two versions, they look near identical. So again, very hard to discern which one is legitimate. And we can see one email sent, one email open, one email clicked. So we know that people are clicking from this campaign that we sent out. So if you do suspect that you're receiving something like this, you want to check the headers. Uh, it was what I was doing earlier was looking through the headers to see if it was fake or not. Again, it takes a lot more time to do so. So the easiest method there for training is just to allow people, if they're not expecting anything, don't click on it. Um, if they didn't ask for it, don't click on it. Because uh, most people are not going to go through and check the headers for every single email. Again, we get inundated with dozens and dozens of emails a day, if not more. So it, a lot of that training is just going to come down to uh, being credulous of what we're receiving and what we're expecting to receive and from whom. So, and on that note, um, a uh, famous quote from Ronald Reagan is uh, actually comes from a Russian proverb, "Dovie no provie," which means trust but verify. 
So uh, if we're receiving this information, we don't necessarily want to dismiss everything as false. However, we don't want to take action on it until we've recognized it as being true. So uh, this has been a, become a key idea to security professionals and it's the easiest way to ensure you don't fall victim to social engineering attacks. Again, oops, pardon me. Again, we, um, information is important and we want to do with it what we can, but before taking action, we really need to look into it. All right, so we can en enable our users to become better defenders by initiating a good training program in our offices and in our uh, programs and divisions, um, creating policies that remind people to, again, trust but verify, and this has everything to do with both digital security as well as physical security, so the same thing as like um, having badges, having people recognize them, not letting others tailgate through the building who might be doing something malicious, because all you need is one person to say, you know, oh, let me, let me let you in. Somebody goes upstairs into somebody else's office, they went to lunch, they didn't lock their computer, and all of a sudden everything's compromised. So it's, it's not just the digital, it's also, um, again, we want to be nice to people, we want to trust people, but that is the easiest way. It's phishing attacks, it's um, even in person, just holding the door open for somebody. So uh, we want to do these training programs on all fronts, we want to do them more than once a year, kind of have them always in people's mind, uh, depending on what your campaigns are showing and how often uh, people are still clicking things, that would kind of help you create a timeline for some of these programs and how often you want to start training people and verifying that they are being, looking to verify before they click. So. That, saves a lot of money in the long run between ransomware and fixing machinery. All right, so that is my talk. Uh, if anybody has any questions about social engineering, phishing attacks, uh, the two programs I mentioned, feel free to ask or, or anything along the lines of um, security and information. All right, well, thank you very much. Enjoyed having you here today.